Now, it's, it's two particular uh, things come to mind to me when we talk about technology, and there's a lot of evolving technology. And, uh, so let's take facial recognition as one of those. You know, we utilize facial recognition every day. Even when we pick up our phones, it automatically opens because it recognizes who we are, et cetera, et cetera. And facial recognition uh, is being utilized in a lot of other places around us, particularly uh, by our federal agencies at times we needed to do so. But there's been a lot of discussion in and around facial recognition because the research still indicates that the challenges associated with this piece of technology is that it has not been normed on the general population. And until we can until we can do that in a way that is going to be that's going to identify people for who they truly are, because we know that facial recognition does not always identify women and people of color appropriately or rightly. And then when we do that, we run into all kinds of Fourth Amendment issues. So I think it becomes important with this evolving technology, which is being used, but in local policing, uh, it has refrained itself from the usage of it. But I think as we go forward in time, we're going to see it as that technology is developed and evolves into something much better than what we utilize it for today. But it certainly has a huge place in crime fighting. A few years ago, I had an opportunity to testify before Congress in front of the late Elijah, uh, Congressman Elijah uh, Cummings from Maryland. And that whole, that whole congressional hearing was centered around facial recognition. I was there representing police, and there were a number of people who sat on the panel with me that was from the ACLU, and also a very brilliant woman, I can't think of her name, who did a lot of research around facial recognition, who was from MIT. And she showed the data, she showed the science of how inaccurate this device may be. In fact, most of them that sit there were like, we really need to get rid of facial recognition. But I, of course, uh, had a different view on it in the sense that let's not totally throw the baby out with the bad, bad water because we know it can be good technology. It just needs to evolve much greater than it is today where people feel safe with it. But here's the problem where local police get in trouble with these technologies. One, when you begin to use that type of technology, facial recognition, or even drone technology, which is becoming more and more talked about in our society today around crime fighting, and around using with that drone technology, you're also going to have facial recognition attached to it. But here's what's important is that one, we have to train, certify, and have policy around the use of technology to make sure that it does not infringe upon or discriminate against any particular group of people. So the question around that you're asking is a great question, but it requires further study, and it requires confidence in the community Number one, that understands exactly what is facial recognition and what is drone technology. If I walked in here tonight and said to you all, well, as your new commissioner, uh, when y'all leave here and go outside, there's going to be drones flying around. And y'all will be throwing rocks at you, right? Like, where did that come from? And why are you infringing upon my, you know, my second fourth amendment, you know, a fourth amendment right? In, but when you bring people into a conversation, when you bring community to, into a conversation around this emerging technology, and people have a chance to understand it and ask questions and really see the utility in it that is going to be a value to crime fighting, people have a tendency to be able to accept it. But when we introduce technology or a new program to communities and something that they've never heard of, all of a sudden, you know, this technology is being utilized and they understand who, what, and where, and how it's being used. It certainly does create suspicion and it creates
separation. But that goes back to the first thing I said when I spoke earlier uh, at the top of this meeting. It becomes important for us to be able to have community as part of what it is that we do to, to fight crime in your community. Because the more that you understand about what we do, the better we are as a department. Because you didn't truly join with us. But there's a lot of emerging technology out there, uh, license plate readers, and I mean, they can just do, I can't even get to tell you the type of technologies that's out there. But we're going to need this technology, quite frankly, to supplant these number of officers that we no longer have anymore. And we're going to need that technology to close that gap and help us fight crime and keep our community safe. But I'm not going to ever introduce anything to you in which you yourself are not going to be informed of and understand the utilization of it and have a voice in it. Because anything that we introduce, I think it's important that people in this room and across the city understand exactly what that technology is, how it's being utilized, because the point of your question to make sure that it's not abused against any particular segment of parts of our community is hugely important for all of us. Thank you.